terms of projection, early on when we uh, were meeting over there in the, the gathering room, I think um, it was Laverne brought up that idea right off the bat of projection, of bringing up, talking about her, her husband, talking about her brother, really brought it up, and it was really early on, I guess it was right at the beginning of the retreat, and I think it's meaningful to talk about um, projection in more psychological, common psychological terms, and in fact Jesus did that a lot with Helen, but I think in my experience when I moved deeper and deeper into it, every time, every time upset would arise in myself, for example, I would just hear this whispering voice, kind of this whispering idea goes through my mind, it was always, it's your lesson, it's your lesson, it's your lesson, it was always the same. And, and that it's your lesson kind of dynamic over and over and over for actually for years started to be a washing away of this of, of this idea of of projection and finally it was we were talking a bit you know a little bit more at the brunch this morning out in the sunshine about you know really it's all good I think Edward was bringing up that um, it's all good wasn't it like you say certs or something is that T-shirts. The t-shirts. It's all good when it started to come out. Uh, I don't even remember when that was, but they started to spring out. And and what I started to have was an experience which was basically that, I would call the impossibility of projection. You know, spirit extends, the ego projects. And the deeper you go into looking at that, it's, of course it's helpful to look at the dynamics for a while, but then the first aspect of forgiveness for me was exposing the error, and then I, when I started to get pretty good at exposing the error, I still didn't have consistent peace, and Jesus said, that's right, because that's, that's just phase one. And I said, well, what's, what's phase two? It <laughs> seems like phase one, you, you emphasize phase one so much in the Course, exposing, exposing, hide nothing. We must keep nothing hidden from each other, he kept saying. We must keep nothing hidden. So I did that, and then he sa I said, what is phase two? He said, phase two is is overlooking the error. It's literally, do not see error. It's, it's going into a state of mind which is so unified that there's that you have overlooked the error. You don't you don't see the error or see a sin and then work with it. You get, you get good at overlooking. And really that's the Holy Spirit's job. It even says that in the Course, that the Holy Spirit overlooks the error and looks to the light of the Atonement. The Holy Spirit is fixated on the light of the Atonement. And what is that? The Atonement is the awareness that the separation never happened. So it doesn't dress up error. And it doesn't even deal with error. It literally is an awareness that the separation never happened. So when I opened and opened and opened into that experience, then this idea of projection, it, it just dissolved away. So, whereas I could see the metaphors, like we talked about with Laverne, it's common to talk about projecting onto a partner, or projecting onto a child, or onto the government, or the military, or to a judges, lawyers, doctors. Uh, it was more of like an interpersonal dynamic. At one point, uh, it just dawned on me that, that the whole cosmos was a projection. It wasn't like tiny little projections going on between the images. It was like the whole cosmos was an attempt to get rid of something uh, that was that was uncomfortable, but, but actually it was a way of keeping it, you know, by trying to get rid of it in inappropriate means, by scapegoating, by blaming, it's actually how you keep it. You don't get rid of it at all. And then I thought, wow, then projection is just like a dynamic that has really no value. And Jesus was like, yeah. <laughs> Love extends, the ego projects, and the projection has no value. So when I started to get into that experience, that was where it started to like rise above this idea of, of opinions. So then it wasn't it wasn't so much of what people thought of David, you know, whether it was positive or negative. 
that started to become more and more irrelevant. You know, it was an experience that was coming in stronger and stronger. And, and yes, that's how the dynamics go. Certainly with messengers, you know, we, we have really hung in there and uh, our goal is set and our goal is very sure. And for those that have come into messengers, it wasn't like uh, in order to become or in order to even use the symbol of messengers of, of peace, you have to be completely peaceful. If you have any disharmony, that's it. You, you can call yourself a messenger of peace slash hate. <laughs> uh, you know, but you know, I mean, that would be more realistic. <laughs> I just want to say, like, before I came, I was uh, always trying to talk everybody out of it. And I said, uh, you know, I have so much control, David. I said, there's no way. I said, I have so much control. And I said, I don't feel like I'm a messenger at all. And he said, if you were healed, there'd be no purpose for us to come together. And he said that we're coming together for mind training and to have a Christ control and to redirect it and learn how to now use it for Christ. And I thought that that was so beautiful. Like, I, that was the whole thing because of all this unworthiness and, you know, and saying, oh, I can't join the, you know, how could I be here? So, yeah, that was very beautiful. It's part of things. I mean, it, I think part of what you're asking, Devin, too, is, yeah, things are going to come up, and it's like what we wanted to really do is is really get anchored in the trust in the Holy Spirit who's was going to carry us and lift us all beyond that, have a unified goal, and then make an atmosphere or an attitude or a space where the darkness could arise, you know, not to try, our desire wasn't like to try to, try to get rid of it, but, because that's really not our function, you know, it's the Holy Spirit's function to shine away the darkness. It was just to make an atmosphere, an environment where it could be allowed to rise up and, and be given over to the light. Because I think it's, there's such a fear of letting that darkness come up. I mean, people feel like insane. They feel bonkers when that darkness starts to come up. And we're just saying like, okay, let's do that. And and that that actually is, is how it works for us. I think we, we were all, the messengers were all together down in Noosa, and uh, we were down there, five of us were down there in Kangaroo Valley, but I think the last time that we came together more up in the North America was up in Canada. I think it was maybe like how many days? Seven, eight, nine in days? Canada, something like, like that. ten days. Yeah. And there was some stuff coming up for people there. <clears throat> it was perfect. We were out in rural Canada, and it was like, good. Let it arise. Bring it on. And, and it does arise in a in an interpersonal form. You know, it does come up as if it's somebody's doing something that I don't like kind of thing. And of course it's going to arise like that. Uh, you know, we will, you're going to let it arise just as it seems to be. You're not going to try to put some kind of a label on it and say, no, no, God is, and, and stuff it down. And so... We had some pretty long discussions. There were some pretty intense emotions that came up. It was like a, just another purge. That was, uh, I guess that was last year. Wasn't it? I can't, I was checking yes. it. Like September. August. Tem August, September, right around in there. It was getting, just starting into the fall of, of 2000. It was like we had our own devotional. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. You know, where it was like, it, and it was funny because it was scheduled and that we came there. And, it was really beautiful because, like, just coming together and just doing the same thing that we're doing and just really allowing everything to just come up and just being completely authentic. It's the most beautiful gift. You know, like, there's no small upset. So us being together, it's really important for us to just allow whatever is coming up to come up. And that's, I feel like, the gift for me being here is that it's just all about, it's all for me. It's all for me to keep my mind clean and use these relationships just for that, just for me to be in the one relationship. And so it's like we can feel it too. This it's almost like, oh, is there something, you know, and then we just kind of come together and, and it's not personal. It's like saying I'm having whatever come up and just allow it to come up and in a safe 
unconditional space. Yeah, it's, it's very much like the philosophy of uh, before you have anything to share with anyone or a word to speak to anyone, it's like spirits like saying, get your own house in order. Uh, you know, the old idea, you know, if like if you point the finger at someone, you have three fingers pointing back. I always say one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. You got the Trinity. Like when you point the finger, the Trinity is looking right back at you, going, Oh yeah? Oh yeah. What about it's like get your own house in order. And and when Jesus talks about enemies in the song of prayer, you know, you know, he's he's talking about enemies in the context of prayer. He says, If you have, or if you perceive enemies, you have great need for prayer indeed. Uh, as, as they're asking him, you know, it's kind of the question is coming out, uh, how do you pray for your enemies? And Jesus' answer is, if you have enemies, you have great need of prayer. Because prayer is like a purification. What Jesus is really saying is, if you have an enemy, pluck the offensive thought from your holy mind. Do not let your holy mind be a garden for weeds <coughs> or attack thoughts. Pluck, it, pluck the offense. Instead of pointing the finger and at the of offender, the perceived offender, pluck the offense from your own mind. So, basically, that's been my philosophy. In other words, I took that on. I took that to heart. And then I started to attract very sincere, loving, devoted witnesses who, who really pretty much just were like, yeah, that's exactly what the Course is teaching. That's what forgiveness mm -hmm. is about. It's about plucking all the offenses out there, whatever it is. And then, uh, once again, like Lisa was just saying, we, we came together there in Canada. It was just another time. It was kind of a rare time. We hadn't even been together that much. We were all over the world. But we came together to, again, if there's anything we have to clean house with, if there's anything we need to get our own house in order with, let's do it. And then, there's a gift that comes from that, from the cleaning, from the clearing, from clearing the altar of anything that's mm -hmm. not loving. Just clearing, cleaning, clearing, clearing. Then, it's almost like the Spirit just is like, hmm, thank you. Now, we can share and extend. <coughs> we, have, we have something to give. And Jesus says that, that, <coughs> that you know, miracles cannot be extended in, in the spirit of doubt or fear. And so that's why the cleaning the house and getting the house in order is so important. It's not like Jesus isn't ready to perform the miracles. Jesus is very ready. But it's just like when the mind is, is still has doubts and fears, it's, it's not ready to let that light shine through it. It's like if you had a, it's like you had a mirror, you were ready to reflect the light to, the, to everyone, to the world, but you had spots. There's a dirty mirror. It's like, get the Windex out, and get the get the, the cloth out, and, and clean, and clean, and clean, so that light can just reflect and shine. You know, the light is always shining. It's a matter of, if, do I have the spots, the spots of darkness, where the light can't reflect, because there's just spots there. So, it's very much what our practice is.